Hello, I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, where we connect into a matrix of newsmakers to get to the heart of an issue. And watch out, they've got to answer in 25 seconds or less, or else. Let's take a look at that issue right now. Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has battled trial after trial on corruption charges related to his media and sports empire. The billionaire magnate has been accused of hijacking the judicial process by changing laws to get him off the hook. And yet the 74-year-old Teflon premier, who admits he's no saint, has been elected time after time. This time, Il Cavaliere faces trial on sex charges and abuse of power that have shaken his governing coalition and turned hundreds of thousands into the streets. According to a nearly 400-page indictment, Berlusconi paid for sex with an underage prostitute and called police to free her after she was arrested on theft charges. Berlusconi and the now adult woman both deny they had sex. Can Berlusconi survive this gauntlet? His supporters point to his leadership as the longest serving head of state among the G8. Berlusconi's critics say he's lost all credibility, made the country a laughing stock with his bunga bunga parties, and that now it's time for him to quit. Now wired into this edition of the network is in Brussels, Monica Frassoni, who is co-president of the European Greens Party. She's on Foreign Policy Magazine's list of top global thinkers. Let's go to London. Charles Young, who is the author of Impunity, Berlusconi's Goals and Its Consequences. And in Milan, Giuseppe Cruciani, journalist for Radio 24, who's reported extensively, of course, on Mr. Mr. Berlusconi. Let's uh, start, first of all, uh, with Monica. Monica, this uh, indictment is for about 400 pages, and a lot of people are saying this is all circumstantial evidence. Do you think it's really enough to convict Mr. Berlusconi? This is not my decision, but the problem here is that perhaps we will never reach a decision because all trials to Mr. Berlusconi uh, hardly ever reach a decision. So that is the real problem we have in Italy. We will never know if he's guilty or not. Okay, well, uh, uh, Giuseppe, let me go to you now. Uh, this kind of related to that is uh, Mr. Berlusconi and uh, uh, Ruby, who is uh, the, the woman in question, uh, that is her nickname anyway, uh, they both say that they didn't have sex together. Uh, do you really believe them? Or, there's also an Italian lawmaker who says one way out of this is to lower the age of consent. What do you think? I think this is a big political question related to Berlusconi's private life, in which he has obviously made mistakes. Can a public figure indulge in such a private life? But the indictments are ridiculous, senseless. I think that Berlusconi will be acquitted. Okay, thank you, Giuseppe. Let's go to Charles in London now. Mr. Berlusconi uh, had called police to release uh, Ruby, uh, to be saying that uh, he believed that she was uh, the niece of uh, Mr. Mubarak, uh, the Egyptian president at the time, and that it would cause a diplomatic incident if, he, if she remained uh, in police custody because of those theft charges. Uh, do, do you think, who do you believe? Uh, and there's also the, the argument that Berlusconi was saying that, yes, uh, th there would be be uh, this uh, diplomatic embarrassment, but the prosecutors are saying it's because she would have revealed secrets about what was going on. Well, I think if he was concerned about the diplomatic uh, incidents, uh, the diplomatic effects, he might have released her perhaps to the Egyptian embassy and not to a Brazilian uh, escort. Um, I tend to agree with Giuseppe that his private life is not that important. I think his credibility is important. In past um, issues of this kind, like in the Noemi affair, he has told a mass of contradictory stories. Okay, uh, but Charles, I think. Got Got to leave it there. Uh, let, let's let's go yeah. uh, to Monica. Monica, what does this mean for the European Union? Because a lot of people are saying that this scandal, among others, is paralyzing Italy's foreign policy and thus paralyzing a major player in the European Union. That is so, and it is not only paralyzing the external or European policy of Italy, but it is also uh, taking away the priority from the real issues in, European, in Italian politics itself. This government is non-existing on very crucial questions. Giuseppe, a little bit related, the Corriere della Sera, a conservative newspaper, is among those saying there is political paralysis. There are a lot of issues that the, uh, the government cannot deal with because they're preoccupied with this scandal. Politicians are abandoning him. Is it time for Mr. Berlusconi to step down? 
No, io credo che No, the government's problem isn't Ruby, though that is a problem. But the biggest one is consensus of popularity. The government is not making reforms. It's at a standstill because of questions about the composition of its majority. There is a problem of consensus, but this is not what has blocked the government. Thanks, Giuseppe. Charles, let's go to you. Let's go let's look at the economic side, because in your book you did talk about uh, Mr. Berlusconi's impact on the economy or not. Or the, or not. <laughs> and uh, what do you think about this uh, issue? Is the scandal preventing the government from dealing with this financial crisis? Yes, I think that is the most important issue. Italy is the only major country which is now poorer than it was uh, 10 years ago. Uh, there is no other country uh, except for a few Zimbabwe, Haiti, Ivory Coast that are actually poorer. There's a, a huge gap that's opened up between Italy and comparable states under the okay. Berlusconi regime. Thank you, Charles. Uh, uh, Monica, let's go to you in Brussels. A lot of Italians say, so what? He's our leader. He's a rich man, okay, but he's powerful and he leads the country. And he's led the country, as we saw in that, that piece at the beginning, l longer than most G8 uh, leaders right now. Uh, why do you think he should step down? Or do you think he should step down? Well, he should step down because he and the system that he has around him uh, brought about people who are incompetent and uh, not able to deal with a, with a very important country like Italy. But he also should step down uh, because the Italian democracy is not a real democracy in terms of information and in terms of capacity of people of making himself, themselves an opinion. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty powerful words. Mr. Uh, uh, Giuseppe, can I ask you, uh, what about this angle that uh, a lot of Italians are just fed up with politically correct values that they see that the people outside of Italy that uh, are, are uh, imposing their politically correct values on Italy with this scandal? As usual, there's not much accurate information about Italy outside the country, and it's normal for this scandal to provoke controversy. I think that Italian support for Berlusconi is falling because of this scandal and other things. But I don't agree with Monica Frassoni about there being no democracy in Italy because of the lack of unbiased information. That's just a parody of Italy today. Okay, Giuseppe. Uh, Charles, uh, let's forget about the scandal for the moment, uh, just about the sex charges anyway, but let's, let's talk about security. The fact that the, these, these villas of Mr. Berlusconi were, had lax security, were allowing these women on, uh, and this question of blackmail, that he could be blackmailed by these women. What do you think about that? Uh, it is a concern, uh, but I would like to repeat that I think it's the economic failure that is really uh, the most important. Okay. A question to all of you as we wrap up very quickly. Monica, do you think Mr. Berlusconi is going to get a fair trial? His, his, will his trial get a fair trial because Mr. Berlusconi controls most of the television media in Italy? Well, I think that uh, there will be some media which will make a, a good information, some others, uh, above all television, which will be completely biased. Uh, but I think that the real problem is that I'm not sure that the trial will actually take place. And that is the biggest problem, as I said before. Giuseppe, what do you think? Will, uh, will, the, will the trial get a fair trial? In this trial, the judges seem to have already decided that Berlusconi is guilty. The courts in Milan have been targeting Berlusconi for the past 15 or 16 years. But this will be the biggest trial as they will try to convict him at all costs. I don't think that it will be prejudiced. I think that it will depend on the facts. Thank you, Giuseppe. Yeah. Thank you very much. Charles, yes or no? Do you, think he'll get, do you think the trial will get a fair trial? Yes or no? Uh, he'll get a fair trial. Uh, the things that are lacking in Italy now are, as uh, Monica said, um, uh, the, the rule of law is under attack and plurality of information is inadequate. And Thank those you very two much. things are needed for a democracy. Thank you, Charles. Got to go. We'll see how this trial plays out. That's all the time we've got for now. I would like to thank our guests, Monica Frassoni, Charles Young, and Giuseppe Cruciani. I'm Chris Burns. And until next time, thanks for connecting with The Network. Oh, no.